Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. 
Deadly Grounds coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <coughs> it's scary. Hey, hey, welcome to another awesome episode of Still Token With. And uh, with us, as always, uh, actually, we just have him on one screen now. Ben and Jeff, how's it going, my friends? It's going well. Going fantastic, as always. Yeah, we're on one screen because we are once again in New York. Yes. Awesome. And why are you in New York? Um, we were driving around, mostly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, we're, we're filming. Yeah. Well, we're scouting... <laughs> We're scouting sites and, and potential uh, locations uh, for, you know, for episode three. Yeah, for some of the weird little shit we're going to be putting in some of the filming. Yes. Uh, well, well uh, speaking of episodes, uh, if you're new to the show, check the show notes down below or up above, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. You'll find information about our awesome guests. And also, uh, episode one of uh, Still Token With is uh, in the show notes as well. You can check it out on Vimeo. <laughs> Leo, I love the new background, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, you got your office finished, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a lot of work, uh, mostly uh, a lot of wiring in the uh, uh, electronics cabinet. So, well, now we can see the window. Yeah, you can see the window, and it's yeah. Nice. So you know, you don't want to talk about that. Well, let's no, talk about our awesome guest. Who is with us today? Go ahead. <laughs> That's some 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 gorgeous thing there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Oh jeez, <laughs> Leo, this is bad. He's on the same channel as oh, me. Like, no, okay, okay. You know what? You may know her from Wrong Turn. She has a brand new movie out called Voices, which is absolutely phenomenal. I watched it myself today. Uh, and uh, you may know her from a bunch of other places, but we are speaking with the most awesome Valerie Jane Parker. How's it going? So good. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Even if you don't know my name, it's okay. <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's on the screen it. now. You can read it. <laughs> I like her. Thank you. I think I got a new co-host. Nobody <laughs> said no. I didn't know her name. I was cut off before I got to that part. Well, because I knew where it was going to go. I figured right, it was right off the tracks. Well, I was bringing it off the tracks right out of the get-go. Yeah. What's wrong that, with that? Not a big well, one. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I do. Everybody um, loves a train wreck. <laughs> oh, well, you'll love this show then. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the big question is, uh, Ben, did you, you let him have the gummies or did he uh, raid uh, Bill's vodka again? Well, um, we, we just got back from the bar. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Does that answer your question? So both? You know, well, it's been a long, you know, we were out, we were literally driving for hours today. Yeah, we, we know, literally so, scouted locations. You know, it was really, really cool. Today. You know, uh, no, the gummy hasn't kicked in. I ate that about 15 minutes, 20 minutes ago. I promise Leo, if he gets out of hand, I can just do this. Oh, now I'm just in the distance. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> welcome to the show, Valerie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for uh, agreeing to come on, <laughs> especially, you know. Hey, I'm a lot of fun. Yeah. Just ask me. <laughs> and, uh, we we may have a uh, another guest joining us a little uh, later, uh, Nathaniel, and I'm going to butcher his last name, Nuon. Mm -hmm, that's correct. Awesome. It's four letters, Leo. How bad can you butcher it? It's N-U-O-N. It's not like trying to push the buttons on, on your computers, Leo. It's you know? okay. uh, no, I'm from the South. That's a lot of vowels. It could be like Nuon down here. Yeah. You don't know. Right, right. Leo in. It's a lot of things. <laughs> A lot of things. About. Well, yeah, I suppose the way the way yeah the way some of it is uh, some people pronounce stuff. Yeah, look, New York. <laughs> you know, well, well we're we're Boston guys. We're so, originally you know, from oh, Boston. Oh, yeah, so we're not from New York. You think you're tougher than me? Oh, I don't know. Maybe why? Where are you from? Uh, Africa, actually. I know. I read that. <laughs> yes. I read that. So well, while we're waiting for Nathaniel and getting into voices, the new movie you're in, let's let's talk a little bit about you, where you're from, where you've been, what you're doing, which is kind of how we usually do the show, anyways. Um so Zimbabwe. 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 Zimb what? 
You're is making it. Is it oh, he is so fired. <laughs> See, a lot of vowels. It's hard. Zim, Zimba. It's okay. Zim. It's Babwe. good. Zimbabwe. <laughs> Zimbabwe. So you were born in Zimbabwe. I was, yes. To so, missionary parents over there. And then they moved. They're both from Tennessee. So they moved back to Tennessee. And my dad became a pastor. So I read that. Yeah. That's, Pastor's kid. That's kind of. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm curious as to uh, where exactly uh, this Zimba, Zimba, the web we is. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have fun tonight. Uh, Zimbabwe is a country right above South um, South Africa. Okay, so it, it's just above South Africa. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't know. I mean, Africa's a big continent, and I wasn't sure where. No, that's... it actually is. That's a good question. See, you mean any crap? Google could have answered it, but I, I am happy to. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, how did how long did you live in Zimbabwe? Oh, we, uh, only three years. Okay. Uh, moved back when I was young, so I don't have any real memories. People like I think I remember things, but it's just because I've seen like the video so many times or been told the story. There's no way I actually do. So. Right, right. Yeah, but still, that's that's extremely interesting. Yeah, I mean, it sounds cool. It makes me sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great on my IMDb. Leave me alone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right? Uh, so uh, no, 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 no. Well, you know, this is something I'm interested in. How did you, looking at your your resume, you have a ton of different accents you can do for the different characters. For for obviously for any roles you you could do. Uh, what is your favorite, and how did you learn them all? Oh man, um, I grew up doing theater, so I had to get really good at accents for theater. And I did a show called The 39 Steps where I played so many characters. Um, one woman plays like 70 roles in that show. Oh, and wow. I had to master accents for that. And the one that was the hardest was the Scottish accent. So that was the one that I was probably most proud of. But you just um, you could audio tapes on it. You learn how they say their vowels. And then um, I tend to find like once I can like get a sentence in that accent stuck in my head, I can then say anything else, like starting from there. It's just like you practice saying those vowel sounds so many times that then like you find a way to lock in. That's cool. You can you them. speak Boston? No, actually, I, that is the one American one I'm bad at. I can't do Boston. Wow. That's wicked cool. <laughs> that's wicked, that's piss off. That's piss off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Boston. Boston gets me. You guys have a tricky accent. Because we're tough. Ah, we're tough. <laughs> Hard to pin down because you're tough. Uh, right? <laughs> well, there's always been that battle going on between the Boston and the New York accent. Uh, well, I, I thought, I thought, we're in New York. We're in New York. So, you know. I, I thought Boston, you just removed the R from everything. Well, that's part of Listen, it. Listen, Mr. Connecticut. We drive by you on the way home. I will stop and throw toilet paper. It's okay. No, you can save that. Well, it's worth money. Yes. As I'd say, a year ago, that would have been a valuable offer. You would have been a good friend doing a movie. Yeah. <laughs> we have a gremlin creeping around up here. Come say hi, Bill. Just come in you and say come hi. say hi. Come say hi to, uh, to Valerie. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm not going to say the name. Uh, they're asking, how's your Australian accent? I believe um, that's pronounced Fook Azu. Fook, yeah, I was going to say Fook Zoo. Yeah, definitely. That is 100% Fook what Fook I'm Zoo was go going on. for. Uh, <laughs> see, Australian accent. Uh, I, I hate being put on the spot with accents, uh, but I can do that. Uh, oh, I feel embarrassed now. <laughs> Cool. And now I'm taking up the whole screen too. It's what I've always wanted. Um, I don't know. Like everybody says, like blimey and throw the strip on the bobby and stuff. But um, I like to say yeah because yeah can normally get me into an Australian accent really well because they don't finish their vowels. Like I mean, they don't really finish the ends of their sentences. So yeah, it's okay. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm saying fuck you. I believe that's how. 
Uh, Tony says the new wrong turn brought the series in a new direction. Did you enjoy the original series? I did, but you know, I was also so impressed by um, Mike Nelson was the director and I thought that his take was so inventive and clever. Like it was a nice change up. I think if they had tried to just remake the original series, we've already seen it and we've seen in horror a million remakes of the same thing too like it's not really exciting i think what excites people is when you take something um you take a trope or a stereotype a story we've told before and you kind of flip it on its head and i feel like mike did that with wrong turn some fans loved it some fans hated it but everybody had an opinion um and at least something like that you're going to keep watching all the way through so right, right i was a fan of the original and a fan with the the new vision yeah, I was always a fan of the original, all, all, all of them. The cannibals. Just to see the second one, the, the new one, though. Well, you're gonna watch it now because you know she's in it. Well, I tried to find it before we came to New York. I just didn't have enough time. It takes me a long time to find it. And I'm getting old. Oh, I'm sorry. That must be difficult. <laughs> I'm sorry too. <laughs> Go away. Your time's done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are all your guests as pleasant and wonderful as me? No. <laughs> No, no. Most of them are not. Matter of fact, you're more wonderful than these two. <laughs> would you like? Would you like my seat tonight? Oh, you're doing fine. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> look at that. That was almost like the rocks in the mountain. It was just right in your face. Yeah. I wow. used to have such like a bad snort when I laughed that my mom was like, "Valerie, you will never get a boyfriend if you laugh in front of them. Like no man will ever want." <laughs> she told me that. Now, I, see, I show up when I get going too, so. Yeah, yeah but that's the white stuff. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I knew where I was going. I snort, but not when I laugh. Only when you sleep. Uh, so, so Tony's going to try to bring us on tracks. He's asking. Thank some, you, Tony. Yeah. So, uh, what's the premise of Voices? What's it all about? Uh, the premise of Voices is that there is a young woman named Lily who loses her eyesight very early on through a tragic accident. And that accident uh, gives her a connection to the other side. So she becomes pregnant later on and finds out that she has up until the first heartbeat of her child, of her baby that's growing inside of her, to choose a spirit. Um, all these undead spirits are coming to her and they want to inhabit her baby. And if she doesn't choose a ghost spirit to come move on in and inhabit her baby, then the other side will choose for her and basically she will end up giving birth to like an antichrist. So yeah, little Sixth Sense, little Rosemary's baby, a lot creepy and I am blind. Okay. How did you manage to play somebody blind? Yeah, you did it really well. I was just going to say, she did an amazing job. Thank you. Um, it was actually, it was a lot of work. I watched a lot of documentaries on um, people who lose their eyesight later on, especially since she already was seeing. It's a different process that you go through with the muscles and the grieving. Um, and then I got a cane and blackout glasses and practiced around my home and ended up going out into public. I did small errands, like going to the grocery store and getting coffee um, without my vision. That was really difficult. And then the most uh, important thing I did to prep for it is I have a friend who's blind, my friend Bobby Holland, and he let me shadow him for a couple of days. Hmm. So we would walk through practical things that I didn't think about. Like he's like, oh, I never use a cane in my house. I know my house. I touch all the surfaces instead. Things like that. Um, shadowed him on his mm -hmm. job. He's a sound engineer. And working with him one-on-one -on -one and seeing his real-life experience day in, day out, that was, oh, so, so helpful. That was awesome. Yeah. I, like I said, I watched it, and I was like, wow. So you, she's yeah. re really playing this role very well. You, you didn't, like, put on a blindfold and walk around? No, 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 no. It wasn't like uh, that. That's what yeah. I would have done. I tried to do that with you. You try to give him a muzzle. <laughs> and he keeps coming back, guys. You're doing a bad job. I know. It's, well, you know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> well, no, you know, no blindfold. Uh, you know, we we do have the trailer for uh, we got a bunch of people watching now. So uh, voices, and I believe it's out it's out on VOD right now. Correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, so, so all the major platforms. Awesome. Here's uh, voices. Loss of vision can be a difficult situation for her to adapt to. You have to prepare for what's coming up. The other day, Lily described something like she could see it. She said the voices told her. Why are you crying? Voices again. 
I lost my baby. Can I be your baby? Take me home with you! Excuse me. Yes. I was just wondering. Do you want a boy or a girl? No. What are you doing? She looks like a crazy person. I was just talking. To There's nobody there alone. I heard a... You and your baby are special. A lifeline that wasn't meant to exist. You have the power to choose the spirit that will be reborn in your baby. What happens if I don't choose? Then they will choose for you. You are not making any sense. I can hear them. They want to be our baby. I saw the evil that is coming. That's awesome. Uh, Voices out on VOD right now. Definitely. I urge you to check it out and, uh, you know, if you're a fan of horror or a fan of suspenseful mo- movies, you'll definitely enjoy it. Well, Bill, see, somebody who can act. Do you know anybody like that? No, you too. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm working with them, I'm hearing voices. <laughs> what, you <pregnant? laughs> Morning laughs. Morning laughs. Oh, sorry, I was reading the chat. <laughs> It was impressive. Very nice. Nicely done. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. 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 I thought thought Leo was asking a question. He had that look. Oh, I I was going through the comments. Sorry. Oh, okay. I thought you had a question because you were like, I, 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 no. I was, no. Like being on the edge of a sneeze, but it doesn't (laughs) come out. Yeah. Right. right? (laughs) Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm kind of great. I'm kind of bummed out I didn't get a chance to before you know we had you on the show, but I mean um, you saw I'm it. Kind of bummed out now the movie you. will be it'll it'll mean more to me now. Hi Tracy. Because now I've met you, see? And so what will it mean? You'll be like, man. Well, because now I feel like I, I have talked to and met the actual person in the film instead of seeing the film and wondering what you're like. Ah. It's so two how, different ways so to look at. How would you describe me? Um, <laughs> what's the little voice in your ears say? <laughs> Be nice. Listen to your heart, not the vodka. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> well, I was picking vodka. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, you know. thanks, uh, Lady J. Uh, I missed it. I, I my my eye, doc, eye doctor appointment I need to make soon. Uh, Valerie, if you could remake any movie that uh, what would be? I, I can't read. What would it be? Do you want me to finish this for you, Leo? What would it be, and what would your dream role be? Alien, the first one. The oh my god! One. Excellent. Yeah, hands go. down. You want to be the alien? No. no. Oh, she wants to take yeah. She wants to, she wants to take Sigourney's <laughs> role. I mean, Sigourney, I given that that's a dream role. She is a tough, sexy, badass chick. Like, I, I I second that. I agree with that. Yeah. I second that. So my uh, uh, favorite series. Oh man, isn't series. it so good? They're all good. I mean, yeah, they're all entertaining. Um, love it. Love it. Uh, we have somebody in the oh, uh, back room. Uh, the direct, the director of voices himself, Nathaniel Nuan. How's it going? Good, good. How you guys doing? doing welcome. welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. We've already me. talked about the whole movie though, so <laughs> I gave away the entire plot. Perfect. <laughs> and I, I gave away the, the ending and everything. Spoiler. <laughs> 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 Late to the party. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm living on like a couple of different time zones right now. <laughs> so uh, so uh, we were talking about the movie out on VOD and actually this question just came in. Will the movie be released on physical media? Um, I believe so. I mean, uh, they for internationally, uh, it's already on uh, a couple of like, physical media. I don't know yet when they're going to release uh, here in the U.S. Um, we 
there is talks that it's, it is going to another streaming platform, so um, which is good for us. <laughs> uh, so I don't know too much about that yet. Uh, I can't really say much either. <laughs> um, I have a but, question. Mm -hmm. Tony, do you really have nine fingers? <laughs> His name is Tony. Has nine fingers. I want to know the deets. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I used to do a show with him. Uh, he messed up one of his fingers in school, and he can't straighten it. So oh. uh, they nicked him, named him uh, Tony Nine. Tony Nine Fingers. fingers. That sounds He's like got eleven toes. Eleven toes. <laughs> 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 and uh, for some reason, Lady J thought Tomb Raider. Oh, that'd be another. I would totally love to, love to. Read I could see her rocking that one too. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, the uh, the new one based on the new games is pretty good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's not why we're here. I'm just <laughs> just adding my two cents. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you know what they say, right? Put your two cents back in your pocket. Well, fine, Ben. So why are we here? Uh, we're here to talk to to these wonderful guests down. Th yes, them too. Still don't know our names. <laughs> Nathaniel <laughs> and Valerie. Well, Valerie and Nathaniel now, now that Nathaniel is here. Right. Right. So, uh, <laughs> Nathaniel, where are you from? I'm uh, I'm living in Alabama right now. I was born in Cambodia. So Cambodia. Okay. See, that's something I can pronounce. Mm-hmm. Not Zimbabwe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. I just Normally, I would be like, Leo, just mute his mic. We'll voice over him. But, yeah. <laughs> no, you did that once. It wasn't funny. Yeah, twi Twitch sp spammers are, are That's a good question from Tony. I like that. Yep. Uh, where did Nathaniel pull inspiration for the movie? Um, it's actually uh, funny enough. It's, uh, it's about my mom's dream. Um, so, I think a while back, I can't remember exactly, not when, but... Uh, my mom and I was having lunch and we were just got into the topic about dreams. And um, she was telling me about this uh, reoccurring dream of a little girl knocking on her door, um, uh, asking if she can stay with us. And my mom kept on telling her no, no, no for like weeks. And then finally she said, okay, sure. So she let the little girl in and then she told the dream to my grandma and my grandma was like, oh, well, yeah, um, you're pregnant and you're going to have a little baby girl. And then nine months later, my sister was born. So I always, I thought that story was really interesting. And then I uh, started digging, you know, into our culture a lot more. And it's actually very uh, heavily rooted in um, in a uh, in Southeast Asian culture that uh, you know a woman who's in or a pregnant woman usually have developed some sort of like inner wait sixth sense kind of um, uh, abilities, I guess. And you know they have this you know, ability to pick and choose what kind of trapped souls that can come back and reincarnate and live their life uh, before they can move on to the next, uh, I guess, afterlife, uh, what we believe. But yeah, that, that that's where that kind of originated from. And then I uh, kind of like developed the, the concept based off of that idea. Nice. Very good. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's actually a great, uh, a great concept or a great way to, to view the concept. I wouldn't have thought like that. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that's how he would have got that concept. Well, it's because like, <laughs> dreams are wet. And <laughs> fucking jealousy will get you nowhere. I, I think it's a great way to look at, uh, you know, uh, reincarnation, you know. Right. Uh, right. You know, I watch a lot of paranormal shows and there's some awesome stories about, you know, uh, where this kid was talking about he was a fighter pilot. You know, and uh, he has all these memories and how he crashed and everything. And, you know, the mom kept on asking him questions and uh, they actually tracked down the family and uh, actually the pilot uh, that he thinks he was. It was just crazy stories out there. That's cool. Oh, yeah. 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 I read about that one, too. It was, it was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, I think there's a book out about it, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but, yeah, it was, uh, you know, and then when we, we started developing the idea um, well, actually, it kind of sat on the back burner for a while until like um, uh, somebody came and approached me and asked me if I had some sort of like like horror idea. And then, um, you know, it wasn't really designed to be a horror at first. Uh, it had horror elements, but it was, you know, and I, 
I kind of like at first thought like, oh, I don't know if I want to do a horror. Um, and because, you know, like it was more like a story about my mom. <laughs> so, you know, you know, when it first developed, it was more about like motherhood and, and, uh, so it was more of a super uh, supernatural drama, um, but we had so many different versions of the of the the screenplay that was just going the wrong way. And then actually, um, when I decided to kind of like fully took uh, control of it, and was like, you know what, uh, I think we're doing this all wrong. And I started like developing the script in a way where it was because um, I, when I started doing research of visually impaired people, I realized that how they watch movie was through uh, audio description, you know, and I thought that was always interesting. And a lot of filmmakers and a lot of movies are not designed for uh, or made for audio description. You know, it's like that's just, that's the last thing they think about. It's like you know, like subtitling or closed captioning for like uh, for deaf people. Um, so you know, with voices, I had a chance to like write and design the script for uh, visually impaired. So it has a lot of like moments that, and the way they talk and the way they, they do things, it's you know designed for people who can't see. So that was like something that I was like, you know, kind of really, really like made the project special to me. Um, and so when uh, Valerie and we were all on set, I kind of explained to them like, you know, we're actually not making this movie for people who can see. We're actually making this movie for people who can't see. And, you know, and we designed a movie to have the same pacing uh, for, uh, for visually impaired people. So when the audio description falls into place, it flows perfectly. So you have this natural transaction or transition between each scene. Mm -hmm. uh, even with the acting, so you know that's just a little tad bit like inner that no, probably not a lot of people realize except for the people on set. <laughs> that's nice. pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah cool. it was really yeah. clever. It's why the dialogue he wrote is so descriptive, like verbally descriptive, and mm -hmm. yeah, like instead of it being jarring with the movie literally having to pause and you don't have a soundtrack, like it's built in the score. There's time for all the narration to take right. place, oh, wow. and if. Yeah, so it's a much more cohesive experience if you are visually impaired getting to watch our film. Well, like they say, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, but if you can't see the picture, you need the thousand words. Yep. That's true. Wow, I'm almost impressed with you. You like that one, huh? Almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, that was good. Oh, no, no, I didn't give you one. I said almost. <laughs> uh, Tony says uh, it has an omen meets the uninvited vibe, but it has a better backstory. Hey, thank you. I don't get a lot of compliments on my back. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I, I'm not going to go there. No. Well, see, I, I watched the movie, so. Okay. <laughs> compliments on the back. I watched the movie. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah, um, that needs nothing further. No. Well, Leo? Leo? Yes, sir. Um, on that note, can, can we go to commercial? <laughs> We can, we can. So, uh, you know, definitely check out the show notes uh, and uh, follow our awesome guests. There's still plenty of show left, so definitely stay with us. And uh, so we're talking about the movie Voices, which is out now on VOD. Absolutely phenomenal movie. But, you know, our show uh, and the Dorkening Podcast Network uh, has an awesome sponsor, Deadly Grounds Coffee. They make the absolute best coffee you'll ever have. It's a little mom and pop shop here in Connecticut. And, uh, you know, if you like flavored coffee, Death by Chocolate is amazing. Uh, but, you know, support small businesses and, uh, you know, you get great coffee out of it. But here's a zombie talking about coffee. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds Coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. So head on over to getdeadly.com and, uh, you know, I need to place an order myself. There's a new s'mores flavor that, oh my God. Uh, so, uh, also a couple of guys, uh, have been working on something down in New York. Uh, it's a little thing, uh, called toking with the dead episode one out now. And that is also in the show notes. And, uh, here's the trailer. If your world was turned upside down, what would you do?
What the fuck are we gonna do now? Get high. more fun that way. Cooking with the Dead episode one is available now on Vimeo. Links in the show. Don't have to try. Uh, episode two is coming out soon, right? I got Leo. Epi well, episode two is um, in post. It's in post. That, that's a few months out still. Okay. And I would say a few months out. We shot like three scenes from episode three and then did some scalp locations. But okay, enough about yes. that. Back to, to these fine guests that, that we have down yeah. here. Today. Well, I want I wanted to say something here because um, you know the, the basis of the you know the storyline and the whole reincarnation and all that kind of stuff uh, reminds me of um, my uncle actually wrote a book years ago <laughs> called uh, Whispers Through Time. Hmm. And it's all about reincarnation and it's about a uh, um, a psych psychologist or it, you get hypnotized he hypnotizes his mm -hmm. patients and has a way to bring out their past lives past life regression i know people who do it i'm yeah, already yes but yeah, uh, I know absolutely I know. phenomenal you know phenomenal phenomenal and you know this is the first actual movie that i've heard about that kind of stuff and i think it's great you know right. the reincarnation and this that and the other you know mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to give any spoilers. All I'm going to say is the bus stop scene was awesome. Bathroom scene was awesome. Great choice on on your on your choice. And I really wish wish I got to see Jerry die. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I, I mean, I mean, every everything about it was awesome. I, I did enjoy the movie. Um, but I don't want to give away too many parts to it because we want people to go see it. And you can find it in the show notes where, Leo? Uh, up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. Tony says uh, you have a very nice back. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Here we go with that back <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, and he wants to know, uh, and he has a question for Nathaniel as well. So uh, uh, Tony's asking for Valerie. Was, what, uh, was this the most difficult role to prepare for? Um, you know, every role has its challenges. Um, I, I don't know that this is the most difficult role I've ever had to prepare for, but it would be top three, um, just because I wanted to be so, it was really important to me not to downplay or caricature anything that a blind person experiences because this is something that affects thousands and thousands of people. And I wanted to be really honest to their experience. Um, so in that way, in the physicality part, yes, but everything's different. <laughs> uh, and he's asking for Nathaniel is paralyzed your next film. Actually it's, uh, it's before it was before voices. It's just now getting some sort of release date picked up. Cause it was, uh, I shot paralyzed, um, two years before I did voices like super indie style. And uh, we had, a uh, you know, roughly about 10 grand to shoot it and we shot a whole feature um and it's kind of like us along the same lines as voices kind of the the i guess they're happening in the same universe in a sense um but you know it's completely a different 
type of story storyline. Um, but they are, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I mean, it it's definitely happening simultaneously. Uh, if I was ever to do uh, a sequel to Voices, some of the characters from Paralyzed would meet some of the characters from Voices, uh, oh, nice. just because they the story kind of intertwines with each other. Um, as far as in terms of like the idea of um, you know uh, being special, we're not post like the like the existence of yourself here. Um, and the other thing that I was like when I was doing research that kind of like gave me goosebumps was when um, the accident. I read about an accident uh, or heard about an accident, and I looked it up on YouTube. I don't know if the video is still there, but uh, a woman was calling for help for EMT to come get her baby because they were trapped under a car. And the EMT heard her clearly. They had it on cell phone. He ran over there to go get it, to go help her. And then they found out like later that the mom like, had died like hours before that. And they heard her, they heard the mom calling out like clearly. So I always thought that was interesting, like that the fact that like her daughter was either supposed to die in an accident, but didn't. So they have like an alternate lifeline or like a parallel universe that they is not supposed to exist between um, you know a person who's supposed to have died. Uh, so every person they come across or they affect their lives, which, you know, in terms create a new timeline. Uh, so that's kind of like the premise for Paralyze and Voices, if you think that's about it. Cool. Uh, so IMDb, the, the uh, synopsis says an EMT who has cheated death for most of his life finally has to pay his debt when death comes <laughs> to collect during an evening spent at a friend's home. So, so where can people find Paralyze? Is that uh, on not yet. We we're actually we you know when voices got picked up and then everybody's like, what do you have next? And then uh, I was like, well, I do have this film that uh, I worked on two years ago, pre pre voices, and then uh, so now they're like, oh, we we love to pick it up. So we're actually in the process of getting it out to the distributors and and uh, you know uh, releasing that. But no, that's actually pre pre voices. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm working on a side of my film now, so. Do you do you have a chip or something in my fucking computer? Because no. I literally just went to IMDb to look at that so that I could ask a question, and you just went. <laughs> Sorry, I, I try to stay on things. Okay, cool. It's the Leo show, folks. Yeah. <laughs> all, all you, all you. Did I read something about Emmys? Yeah. Oh yeah, a, your Emmys, Seth. I read something about Emmys. Don't be shy. Oh uh, yeah, I uh well when I. Got back from um uh moved back from uh from Orlando uh to stay with my mom uh to help her out for uh, Katrina uh just kind of just wiped out her house completely and she barely could speak English so I, I came back and kind of helped her out and I kind of just stayed here and then kind of settled in and then, um at the time there was not a lot of things that we could make uh you know do here in Alabama um before like the whole film boom in Atlanta. Uh, so, you know, I wrote a short film about Cambodia and, you know, I was always, you know, curious about like how somebody can, you know, a country that can be, you know, so prosperous. And then I was suddenly like, just you know, like, do you want to, uh, well, I talked to a, a bunch of people about, like, what, like how did, you know, the Khmer Rouge happen? Um, you know, this is such a crazy genocide in our, in our history and we don't even know how like it occurred. So, you know, with, uh, so I'd start writing, you know, what led up to the Khmer Rouge and it's called Residue. And, you know, we we shot it again, you know, very low budget. Um, it's very, like, driven by, like, dialogue. And, um, you know, we went into a couple film festivals and then it just started winning a couple film festivals and got nominated uh, for uh, for an Emmy. And then uh, we won two Emmys, uh, one for, uh, I think, Best Short Film uh, and then the other one for Music. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, thank you. I mean, it was well. It was back in two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So it's a while back. <laughs> Still it counts. They don't expire. That does they, not that's right. They exactly. Don't they yeah. never expire. I mean, <laughs> that's that's a actually a, a very prestigious award to you know, win. Well, I wish funny they enough, yeah. yeah. Funny enough, it was a historical they piece. One, so. two, and four. <laughs> nice. They don't reproduce. No, they don't reproduce. That just sucks. <laughs> so no, uh, looking at me like <laughs> I have to deal with this all the time. I'm so sorry, Ben. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I so, mean, when, when cons open and we're on the road, I got to deal with this. You know, well, you, you know, in New York. Hey, I'm a lot once of fun. A month, I got to deal with this. 
You know, speaking of cons, uh, I, Valerie, I see you just went to a horror festival or a horror convention. How, how is that experience with, with the pandemic and everything? Well, um, if I'm being honest, it was brief because my grandmother died that weekend. Oh, um, oh yeah, I was like, not to bring up something oh. <laughs> like sadder series, but yeah, so I was in and out. I did not get to spend much time there. But um, the little bit of time I spent there, it was interesting. People worked masks into their costumes. I mean, they it, it also, their convention sold out so quickly because they had to do social distancing. They were already holding it in a much bigger space than usual. But they were like, oh, tickets are gone. I mean, they disappeared. Wow. Um, and it definitely kicked my butt into getting vaccinated sooner. So I'm like, because I knew I had that coming up, I went ahead and, and did the shots. Nice. Did uh, do you have bolster sh shots already, or? Oh, I am done, baby. Nice. All, all free over here. <laughs> Moderna. Awesome. I'm getting my uh, my second next week. Oh, nice. Which one did you do, Moderna uh, or Pfizer? Uh, Pfizer. Nice. I hope yeah. you don't have any side effects. Yeah, I. I, I yeah, mean, really. That's most. Which is my side effect. No, no side effects for Leo. We need him for the yeah. show. <laughs> I, fr from uh, what I've heard, uh, probably the day after, I'll probably feel like crap. Uh, but uh, so you're you know, gonna get it on a Thursday, right? I'm getting it on a Thursday, yeah. and I told Good my boy. wife I'll probably take Friday off. And uh, yeah, uh, where I am, it's like he, he won't screw up our show on Wednesday, right? I'm I'm in like Pfizer homeland. There's uh, huge Pfizer cases, <laughs> and a matter of fact, uh, one of our friends actually uh, was on the team that was working on the vaccine. And oh, cool! Yeah. See, I'm in it's Dolly Parton country down here in Nashville, and she helped fund Moderna, so. It's Dolly shots all the way down here. We've got lots of lots of Moderna. Dolly shots. Dolly shots. Yeah. Dolly shots. <laughs> a little shot of Dolly Parton in your arm, a little double D, you know. Where the hell were we today? What was that? Dolly. <laughs> oh, that was um, no. Um, what movie was filmed there? You guys yeah. totally missed that. No, we didn't. They're fine. <laughs> we didn't miss it. You guys um, are talking about the shots and Pfizer. We we swam in the Hudson. No, she's like double D dollies or something. Oh, yeah, I know. I heard her. I didn't miss that. Yeah, uh, Tony says my boob jokes. Hello, Dolly. It was Hello, Dolly. Oh, that's right too. The movie Hello. We went, Dolly. We went, yeah, we actually saw the little hotel that was in uh, that was used for the Hello, Dolly filming. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was it was really cool. That would be yeah. Sorry, Nathaniel. I know we're supposed to be talking about your movies and stuff, but oh, no, I'm <laughs> good. What happened? Did we come on our show? <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm uh, Tony says, uh, Nathaniel, we love low budget films around here. And uh, Tony, keep an eye out because uh, this was brought to us uh, by Clint over at October Coast. So keep an eye out for his stuff. Yeah, Tony, talk to Kevin. You can have them as guests. Yeah, totally. Uh, and also, uh, you'll have to come to New Jersey for the big three horror cons. Yeah, there's. Uh, I was just thinking that she would fit right in at THC down in uh, Virginia. Yeah, we do a one in Virginia. Tidewater Horror. Uh, um, yes, Tidewater Horror. Yeah, Tidewater. Hotter? <laughs> That's the vodka. That no, it's not. That's the gummy. No, I was about to say it's the gummy kicking in. Yeah, it's been yeah, like that, yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drink my water. Yeah, you should. Tidewater Horror Convention down in Norfolk, Virginia. Cool. Yeah. We sit, we just signed on to that one. In Sweet. Evil Expo. Yeah, Evil Expo's in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I'll definitely get so, it. So, Nathaniel, I have a question for you. Um, what led you to choosing Valerie or what characteristic did you like of Valerie's that landed her in this leading role? Her back. Hobby. <laughs> I asked Nathaniel. Oh. Clearly. De definitely not her back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you agree with that whole thing. They, uh, you know, the funny thing is uh, Mike, our producer, um, when we were doing <laughs> casting, uh, we had a bunch of auditions like uh, Judy, our casting director, had submitted like, you know, I can't remember, like probably hundreds, even maybe thousands, like picked from all over. And I actually didn't watch a single one of them um, until probably the last 10. So I, I kind of just sat and basically was going through like at the office, just listening to all the audition and why Mike, the producer, he was watching it. And then I would just listen to who I liked because like I actually just you know, wanted to make sure that like that person sounded uh, like, you know, li Lily versus like looking or like performing. So it was, it was more about their speech pattern, their, 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 
their words and how they sound in the cadence of like what they say. Um, just because I knew like going into it that when someone who's visually impaired watching this, it just, you know, the person had to sound like Lily instead of look like it. So uh, yeah, Valerie made it all the way down to the last 10. And I actually didn't watch anybody's performance to the last 10 people that we were picking based off of like how they sound. Uh, so that was a weird way of auditioning, but you know, that was just how it worked for this project. And Mike was like, you sure you don't want to watch her? She's pretty good. I was like, nah, she just doesn't sound right. And then, so I might've passed up like a whole bunch of people that probably, you know, <laughs> could have got thrown if I was watching it visually, but, um, but yeah, I casted like the like all our leads based off of how they sound sound before I actually saw them. And and then uh, funny enough, we went to a karaoke bar and everyone we cast can sing. <laughs> they were just killing at a karaoke bar. So I guess like I did something right. <laughs> like you and Jonathan were both like amazing singers. <laughs> so was there. Like, that <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. I yeah, casting somebody for a movie, but not not based on you don't on even their perform their look yeah. it, it's it's that's, based uh, on the voice that's actually pretty cool well based on the style well, of movie and what he was going yeah, for i mean that's, that's yeah a, when it came down to the last 10 people it was performance and stuff uh and valerie has some chemistry read with jonathan too so it was just like down to like you know when we first started i just wanted to hear people instead of like you know um seeing them and then when we got down to the final picks that's when we were like okay we need to watch them and that's when we can kind of see like how they would actually fit together and then you know um but it was heavily like i said 80 percent of it was designed for visually impaired and then the other the other was for visual stuff so even though like i try to focus on it being very a very visual movie um mm -hmm. it does have a lot of like symbolism uh in the in the film a lot of people don't really catch it but you know some of the stuff that we do in the film are uh designed to be uh symbolic towards you know pregnancy and 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 the early stages of conception, you know, um, obviously the underwater scene, everybody can see it and would know like, oh, you know, it's, you know, the first stages. And then the old man scene is, you know, to me, it's, that <laughs> it's was cool. when, I, when Valerie and I was talking about, it, I was like, I, 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 I think of it as reverse pregnancy. So, you know, when a baby's born, it's kind of slimy, it's very young and full of life. And then, you know, and it obviously exits a mother um for reverse pregnancy that the spirit is a symbolism like you know death an old, older man dying slimy and he's trying to be reborn again by crawling back into a mother so yeah a weird symbolic yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, that that scene um i actually spoke to jeff about that yeah. scene prior to the show um i was like dude this one scene this <laughs> happened and i was just like whoa and then the reaction that valerie had in in the film, I was like, "Whoa, okay, cool, cool, all right." I'm digging this. I'm digging this, you know. Um, but yeah, that that was a great scene. I left Thank that you. one out of my my little montage. Uh -huh. right away. Thank you. Uh, on it was, purpose. Yeah, it was it was it was a fun it was a fun night to shoot. We we uh you know um funny funny enough, Jonathan was actually really asleep um yeah. when, when they cut over when he when yeah. she screamed yeah. Like that's why it took him so long to react. <laughs> well, it was a comfortable had, bed, I guess. <laughs> and they had to like come in and cut out the bed frame underneath me so that it could look like the old man was disappearing. But then me, he managed to sleep during that. We're like lying this bed frame. I have my legs like splayed open and they're sawing, and the actor next to me is just snoring. Like he's he's asleep. He's sound. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> Not me. So do you. <laughs> Wow. He sounds so like me. I mean, I can sleep through a house fire, literally. Um, so, yeah. He was like, no, it's comfortable. Just just wake me up and wear it on the I think you are going right now. There are people between my legs. How are you comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> I think when, uh, when you walked on set, you were like, you looked at him that day, that night. You were like, honey, I think we should switch side tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I did ask him to switch sides with that. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, we got a bunch of people watching, and uh, I just wanted to grab this opportunity. We're talking about Voices, which is out on VOD right now. And that scene that we were just talking about, that was like a what the fuck moment for me. It was like, <laughs> what is going on? Uh, but anyway, uh, here's the trailer for Voices. We urge you definitely check it out. You're going to love it. Uh, I did as well. Here we go. The loss of vision can be a difficult situation for her to adapt to. You have to prepare her for what's coming up. The other day, 
Lily described something like she could see it. She said the voices told her. Why are you crying? Voices again. I lost my baby. Can I be your baby? Take me home with you! Excuse me. Yes. I was just wondering. Do you want a boy or a girl? No. What are you doing? She looks like a crazy person. I was just talking to... There's nobody there, Lil. I heard a... You and your baby are special. A lifeline that wasn't meant to exist. You have the power to choose the spirit that will be reborn in your baby. What happens if I don't choose? Then they will choose for you. You are not making any sense. I can hear them. They want to be our baby. I saw the evil that is coming. Voices out on VOD right now. Check the show notes down below or up above, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And we're back. I mean, just it, look, I can't wait. I, like I said, I watched it um, and I, I literally was like, whoa. <laughs> so, you know me. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to get into it because I'm not going to spoil it. I want people to go watch it. Totally. Yes, please. Yeah. All of them. All of them. All of you, everybody in, everybody over there in that chat bar that I keep looking at. <laughs> Exit so, the um, right now. Uh, what's next on your docket? What are you thinking about? Um, how are you going to follow up the voices? Which who are you asking? Both of them. Well, you got to ask one at a time. I'm asking them both. But Let's you see who jumps in first. <laughs> I like I Mal. My way, you do it yours. <laughs> Leave me alone. Um, we're going to create a sequel to it called The Fragrances, and we're going to kill it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Tony. Um, no, for me, I have a couple things in the pipeline, but they're all offers, nothing is signed. So I hope that they work out. Um, I don't okay, know. Good. Yeah. So we'll find out. Okay. Sith? Uh, I'm actually working on a, a sci-fi thriller slash kind of like still leaning into horror. We're, we're, um, we're doing a lot of um, uh, LED virtual production shooting, um, basically uh, mapping out the environments on LED walls and creating a, uh, a world, shooting it all on a soundstage, similar to The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a heavy visual effects background, but also um, mm -hmm. I run a, 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 a virtual reality company that does um, simulations for uh, medical companies. So, you know, we've been dabbling in the VR world for about four or five years now. Um, so it was only a matter of time where we were taking the, the VR technology and merging it into filmmaking. So it's exciting stuff. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of test shoots and we're getting the project off the ground. So it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, and I, you know, sci-fi is kind of like my big thing. <laughs> so, you know, I love sci-fi and, you know, it's just one of those things that, um, yeah, I, I wanted to do like, you know, a different type of like sci-fi, but also just, you know, I grew up with watching early, you know, Twilight Zone with Rod Serling and stuff. So I'm always into that kind of weirdness, but also like, you know, in the genre of like sci-fi has always been my thing. You know, um, I I talk about a lot. I mean, it's probably not a, it's a very dated movie, but, you know, I love the Event Horizon. I love the Abyss. You know, those are just movies yeah. I grew up with. Uh, the explorers, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's not, uh, it's not like a horror or anything, but you know, it's just kids and building a spaceship and meeting aliens, you know, so friendly aliens, I guess. <laughs> and obviously, you know, like uh, Valerie said, like everybody loves aliens, you know, the original aliens. So, uh, right. so and John Carpenter, the thing, you know, those are just stuff I grew up with watching. Classic, classic, classic yeah. stuff. Right there. Yep. Yeah. And, and, Oh, I was just going to say, I, I love hearing uh, you talking about uh, like the LED wall and stuff like that. Because, you know, with, with, yes, I'm getting geeky here. I know. <laughs> I no, it's cool, though. It's actually it pretty cool. cool. Well, that it, was it, 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 it took 59 minutes for him to go geek on me, but. 
I, I, so I, yeah, well, that's awesome. With the high resolution right now, and, and even yeah. with you know uh, Blu-rays and stuff, you could easily pick out green screens, and it totally mm-hmm. took you out of the movie. Yeah, you know, getting rid of the the green screen and just you know having those types of walls, like you said, like Mandalorian. You know, I think it's awesome to hear, you know, uh, that other people are starting to use that technology because it's uh, it's just going to make movies look a hell of a lot better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, once uh, we get off the show, I will send you guys a private link to, um, you know, uh, I, I tend to do like uh, shoot like proof of concept trailers and also mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. proofs for like uh, for sales, but also just for distributors um, to show them like what I'm up to. Uh, nice. So, yeah. And you guys kind of like see what. Um, what i'm actually working on i sent it to valerie she's like oh it's so uh, cool that'd be so yeah yeah that'd be, yeah, that'd be really cool that, yeah yeah yeah, yeah and cool. you know and we're doing on more of like an indie level obviously we're not the caliber of like mandalorian with you know 100 million dollars um so you know i still Wouldn't like that be nice though all right <laughs> yeah i see yeah. that with all our guests i mean it, i don't all our guests i say the same thing yeah. well, there's like, a lot of talent i would people, love you know you know if we could all just get that budget wouldn't that be mm-hmm. so nice yeah, but then you know you you run out like I I, I feel like you know I think you use control of it. I put my foot, well, I put my own mouth here, but uh, I I think that like you know one thing I do love about making movies that are certain tier, but also just even in the independent level is that it pushes your creativity because you know with voices, it could have been a larger scale film. Like, you know, if we had bigger budget, we could you know easily done a lot of things that I wanted to. But then you know it also made us become very creative with it you know mm-hmm. because we, we didn't have the money and and i think that like you know that's one thing that drives our creativity is to you know not the limitations but just the the, the problem solving aspect of it you know you're like oh man I, we got to do this we got to do this um but when you have that unlimited source it's like you either you lose your creativity or the, you know you see like these big movies being produced but just no substance anymore and i think that like you know even with the earlier stages when you know when i go back talking about like twilight zone and rod serling all these guys you know they didn't have that kind of technology and money but their storytelling was so like creative and just you know brilliant it just you know i mean like look at sam raimi with evil dead i mean come on it's like you forget about those kind of right. things you know because they were created because they were limited by what they had you know and um, i don't know that's you know and maybe they somebody gonna come down. Yeah, we're gonna give you an offer for fifty million dollars to make a movie. It was like, uh, uh, hey, I, <laughs> I might retract by what I said. But then again, I think the I, I like think the, make movies in this movie. Yeah, yeah, I think the movie and what you're trying to get and, and how you want that movie to come across mm-hmm. will determine what it, its budget needs to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you could destroy a movie by throwing too much money at it. Yeah. You lose the realness of what it was originally supposed to be. Yeah, but if you yeah. had that kind of money, then instead of rolling like a Prius down the hill in episode three, we could fucking roll a Lamborghini down the hill. Yeah, but this, <laughs> you don't get it. No, I don't. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> I think that our challenges with anything in life and creativity end up being our greatest discoveries. So I think that um a huge budget is great but then you don't discover anything you don't grow which means you're probably right. well, not going to make something super big, big budget films um people expect a big budget experience yeah exactly you know what i mean so oh, i thought it was just so we could order food for the cast you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you know i want to be on that shoot <laughs> sure anytime you know, i i've seen i've seen you know um very economically done movies that look like it was a huge yeah. multi-million dollar mm-hmm. you know job and, and it's just it's phenomenal and like you said the creativity of it it forces you to do things that you couldn't just say okay well here's a few bucks take care of it right mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i think in a lot of ways that makes it it makes more it makes it more real mm-hmm. it would be nice to be like well here's a few bucks can you get coffee instead of well i guess we gotta go get coffee now well, yeah, but you look at it this way. I mean, we're. I'm just being an ass. You get interns for that. <laughs> oh, look at that! Finally, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I totally agree with you guys. You know, uh, dealing yeah. with a, a smaller budget, that's where innovation comes in. You know, and uh, it, it's not the type of camera you have; it's how you use it. You know, and it's not you know how much money you have; it's it's the story. No. I, Perfect example. Look at Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones was amazing up until the last seasons when they ran out of original content. And 
you know, they had a huge budget, looked great, but no story behind it. That sucked. What are we talking about? Game of Thrones. DLT. Oh, I'm sorry. I was stuck on the yeah. size of the camera. Yep. No, I'm a, I'm a, you know, fantasy sci-fi buff. I've never seen one episode of Game of Thrones. Really? Nope. I am lucky. I had like some big events go on in my life. So I've seen every episode until the final season. And I only saw the first episode of the final season. And everybody has told me to just let it lie. Yep. Just um, let it lie. Yeah. So <laughs> I've only seen the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, my problem is I don't have the time. Yeah. Yeah. So if I sit down and I start watching it, I'm fucked because I'm going to be in that couch until it's done. Yeah. No. It's so I, I just, I just don't, but you know. So anyway, a little bit about me, why I don't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know what is only two hours and available on VOD? The voice. Yeah. That's right. Ah, is it go. really? No, no. She said the voice. Well, yeah, no, I got to watch the voice. That's what she was talking about, not Game of Thrones. I was going to say, how they cut that down to two hours? The gummy kicked way in. <laughs> By the way, it's voices, Jeff. Not the voice. The voice is a TV show. Yeah, that's voice a fucking TV show. <laughs> I didn't, what are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so Nathaniel, uh, you, you say you. Uh, uh, what do you work in for your special effects? Uh, what what software do you use? Um, I use. Uh, I mean, quite a bit of different things right now. I um, I started uh, getting heavily into Unreal now, and then um, oh, nice. you know, for their. For the earlier stages of stuff that we used to do was basically my and 3d max and then uh i was using after effects to do a lot of the compositing stuff but now i kind of switched over to resolve so since uh um resolve bought fusion so it's all kind of encompassed uh and it helps out you know when i mastered the uh, voices here i just basically graded it and did like all the the major the small effects there's a lot of visual effects in voices that you know just like erasing stuff and you know so it was just easier to do in fusion um, to, and then you know, go into the final grade and getting stuff out. Uh, I still haven't used their audio program yet, and we've been we've been mixing everything in Pro Tools still. But you know, um, eventually I, we might move over to Fairlight. But right now, that's kind of like the the general pipeline that I usually I do all my editing still in Premiere though. So I'll I do like an assembly cut and then bring it into Resolve to do those the final grades. Nice. I agree with that last comment. By the way. Which one? You'll put it up, yes, that oh. one right there. That one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm a geek. I'm sorry. You know, it's... I mean, really, it, it, we're an hour and seven minutes in. Jeff has made some comments. Valerie made some comments. You never blushed once. He talks tech and you light up like a tree. <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to refrain, you know, trying to keep the show on our guests and uh, didn't want to derail. It's my <laughs> right, right. But Leo took a good chance that night. Yes, tech boner. Oh tech boner. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you, I mean, um, can we talk uh, a little bit about? I mean, wasn't Valerie? Didn't you play do some plays back in the day? I when, did. When you did theater, right? Uh-huh. Didn't we talk about it at the beginning of the show? No, we didn't. That's how she got a lot of her accents. Where were you? <laughs> Go ahead, Valerie. Bring them up to speed, will you? I want to know. I Okay, maybe we did talk about it and we went into accents. I want to know what part she played in theater. Oh, what we didn't I played in theater? Um, no, I did a lot of them. I grew up mostly doing Shakespeare. I thought I was going to be a Shakespearean actress. And then got to college and was studying that and realized they make no money. Um, and I honestly, like, I just enjoy the art of telling stories on film a little bit more. They're more subtle and it was a different challenge and a different art style and they stay around for a long time. And I liked that. So then I kind of transitioned off theater and went into pursuing film instead. So you played um, Juliet, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I played Juliet. When I, was in, when I was in elementary school, I played Romeo. See, we were meant to be together. I mean, <laughs> the fates, man. But then we were both dead. So aren't you glad? Touche. Touche. I like it. Nice. 
Oh my God. Sorry about that. We are, we're getting pretty close to that time. We are. We are. Uh, did any, I, last, any last comments or questions out there uh, that I can't read? Jeremy's been in the chat room. He he, uh, he just popped in. He's yeah, I'm still there. celebrating 420. Yeah. <laughs> just, just have to say, is, is you're great. late, Jeremy, to 420 and to the show. Welcome. <laughs> uh, it's, it's great to see Jeremy. Uh, you know, uh, popping back on social media. Just have to right, say, right, right. Yeah, we'll, we're going to do Jeremy. I want to get him on as a uh, as a special co-host for one of the shows. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony says he just needs a physical copy now. Yeah, see, I'll buy a physical copy when it comes up, but it has to be signed. <laughs> sure. Do you have to buy it first, and then I'll sign it. That's, see, see how easy that is? I would definitely what? buy it. Well, yeah. yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I know we are running on time. Uh, I want to urge everybody definitely check out Voices. It's out on VOD right now, and uh, physical media is uh, soon to come. But definitely check the show notes down below or up above, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And also, uh, Token with the Dead episode one is available now, and uh, that Vimeo link is there. And uh, definitely urge you to check it out. You know, it's just it's issue one, so uh, you know you guys are uh, twos coming out in a couple months. You said, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully yeah. a couple of months, you know, <laughs> but we're, we're, we're starting to film three. So, you know, we're progressing. Okay. It's just a you great know? excuse to come to New York once a month. Bill just likes to have us here. Yeah. I think he likes it. The fact that we walk up and down I and mean, the studio is on 90,000. The studio is 90,000 90, square, 90, square feet on 10 acres. So it's a lot of walking. And usually he hands us a broom when we're walking. So I don't know what that means, but I, I think he wants to clean or something. Well, I think my wife pays him to make me come here. I know mine does. She says she sleeps better. Right. So. <laughs> well, uh, pretty soon, hopefully I can join you guys. And, uh, you know, speaking of that, for me, just Google Leo Pond. You find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which, but I urge you to definitely follow our awesome guests here. And I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. Head on over to thedorkening.com. Over 30 shows on the network. Matter of fact, I'm going to be doing another one just shortly at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern tonight. And uh, we'll start with uh, Nathaniel. Where do you like people interacting with you on social media? On uh, social media? Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, either Instagram or Facebook, you know, um, I need to get back like heavily on social media, but I've just been, uh, you know, super busy and, but yeah, I mean, uh, any, I don't, I only check easily Facebook and Instagram really. <laughs> so. Sounds good. And, uh, same for you, Valerie, where do you like interacting with your fans? I am an Instagram girl all the way. I am also on Facebook. I do not tweet, but Instagram is definitely the best way to interact with me. That's the one I'm on. And it's very hard to find me. Uh, my screen name is Valerie Jane Parker. So you're going to have a, a tough time tracking me down on there, but that's that's where I'll be. <laughs> and uh, the links for both Nathaniel and uh, uh, Valerie are in the show notes. And Ben and Jeff. My hood's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> What? My hood, it was hitting me. Just shut up. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. You don't want to follow us, trust me. This Not him. Yeah. Uh, stilltalking.com. Go to stilltalking.com. Yeah. There's a bunch of links you can click on anything. Yeah. We're on every social media platform known to man, including MySpace. You know, so, Facebook, yeah. Talking with the Dead. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Go to, uh, let's check us out. Don't ever Google me, though. No. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Is that. Everything we'll find is true? <laughs> um and then some. No, it's not it's not really it's not really me. There's another me out there with the name. So uh, you don't trust anything. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. Now, unless I tell it to your face, you never trust anything. I don't even trust myself sometimes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so so what you're saying is somebody's looking for you and we may have need to turn you in. There's somebody looking for me? We found him. He's right here. Okay, cool. I think he's in New York. Yeah. Can, well, you, can you pronounce her name now? Look, Valerie Jane Parker. And Nathaniel. Pronounce his last name. It's not on the screen. <laughs> New one. Oh, you got it. Our, our two wonderful guests tonight. You know, like Leo said, check them out in the show notes up above, down below. Squirrel. Right. Um, no, you guys have been awesome. Um, 
you know, so yeah, to all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do every day. So people like us can come up here and do what we do every day. We love you. We'll see you next week. We're out of here. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, guys.